So, uh, so again, uh, as was introduced, I'm Nick Gardner. Uh, I'm actually the staff librarian at Potomac State College as of uh, January 2nd. Um, prior to that, I was working in a paraprofessional role um, as a library assistant and then was a program coordinator for a while for the special collections. Um, that's not really germane to this. Um, so to answer your question, yes, the students do come in the library. They actually use it as a quiet study space and they also do check out books. Um, uh, actually, we're really happy um, in the past three years we've seen our circulation increase at least three times what it has been on average for the past decade. What kind of books are there? <clears throat> There's been a great revival in fiction, so we're happy to see that students are actually using the library resources primarily for pleasure reading. Um, being a WVU library, we, our students have access to over 400 databases, half a million ebooks, etc., for their research needs. And so primarily when they're coming to our collections, they're coming to use the books as sort of a, you know, a little bit of an outlet from the, the you know, their studying, their focus. They need something to like kind of de-stress. So we were really happy to see that because we know people who typically are reading a lot of fiction, they're using different areas of their brain, so it's really nice. So um, librarian roles have of course changed over time. Uh, we do a lot more in teaching them how to use information sources from everywhere. A lot of what we teach them how to use is on the open web. Um, and so where this project kind of started is, give me a second to set this very heavy thing down, which I'll explain in a few minutes what this is. All right. So one of the things that we ran into is, how many of you guys have ever used a microfilm machine? So if I asked that same question in one of our uh, student classrooms, <laughs> I'd be the only one raising my hand. <laughs> Right. Um, microfilm is a really cool format. It's great because it is durable for a super long time, provided you're storing it in the right conditions. Um, the one in the, and so you can build, like, and actually compact a lot of information in a small space. Uh, the thing that's really unfortunate about microfilm is access. So it's very possible for libraries like the State Archives, the Regional History Center in Morgantown, to build huge collections of newspapers on microfilm, but the problem is if you want to be able to access and use those resources, you have to travel to Charleston or you have to travel to Morgantown to use them. And so what often happens for a lot of libraries that have microfilm collections is people contact the libraries and say, hey, can you look this up for me? And for the past I want to say at least 60 or so years that Potomac State has had a microfilm machine. The way that we have addressed those kind of needs is to look them up. Unfortunately, um, our staff size has dwindled over time, and a lot of times our focus and needs have been more on helping the students. So right now we actually have only about three people on staff, uh, myself, a director, and a desk clerk. So our ability to meet the needs of what our students are doing and to be able to provide these resources has really been in conflict. So our previous director, Charles Julian, um, who had actually, pre he was a, from the Wheeling area. Uh, anyone who's ever met him knows that he talks a lot about Wheeling. He's very tight with the Ohio County Public Library. Um, so he recognized one of the things that needed to happen was, hey, we have these great microphone resources, but we need to figure out how can we make it so people can access them. So looking at what Ohio County Public Library had done, which was to work with a company called Advantage Archives in Iowa, we basically put, basically he wanted to get the microfilm collection that we had digitized and made available on the web. Now, there's a lot of projects out there to digitize historic newspapers. Uh, typically, a lot of times, the big commercial ones you guys are probably familiar with, Newspaper Archive, Newspapers.com. The problem with these resources is they're often behind a paywall. And typically these are not libraries to news, or these are typically often not libraries to the site. A lot of times this is newspapers reaching out to these companies and they're getting some percentage of clicks from the uh, times when people go in and access it. Now a lot of times, you know, there's, these sites make a lot of promises about how much uh, revenue they'll actually generate from this uh, that often doesn't bear out. And the reality is the amount of access that people have to that content is very limited because it's stuck behind a paywall. I mean, how often have you guys looked on Google and you found something germane to your local history or the state history, but you couldn't get to it because it was behind that? 
And that's not something that we wanted to be part of. So it was really important for us to make sure that this collection was accessible. So for those of you who haven't heard of the West Virginia Newspapers Project, uh, what we are is free access to newspapers <coughs> for Mineral, Grant, Hardy, and Hampshire counties. Uh, this has been funded by Potomac State College. Uh, I'm not going to go on record saying how much money we've dumped into it, but it has been more than 50, at least more than $50,000, uh, and that has come out of our budget, and it's come out of community donor money as well from both individuals and organizations. So as I said, it was really important for us to make sure this was content that anyone could get to. So I'm going to show you guys in the end here how to actually get on it. Uh, we'll do some searches for stuff that you guys are interested in, and I really hope that after this presentation, you guys all rush home and like spend hours and hours on this thing. <laughs> so, all right. Are you, so, saying, are you saying we can't do it while we're at work? <laughs> hey, that's between you and your boss. So, um, to give a, actually to kind of go back on a, a little bit of a background of myself, um, I was I came from a STEM background. I have an undergrad degree in biology. Um, so, historical history has, was not something that I'm very familiar with in a lot of ways, so I've had to do a lot of growing and learning over the past year with this project to kind of keep it moving and kind of keep it growing. Um, but for me, one of the big issues that I saw um, in biology, and I actually worked on publishing a couple fossil reptiles, was the ability to actually go back and access older papers that people had made available that was something that, if that was, hadn't been there, I couldn't have done the research I did as an undergrad. I would have been limited by our collection that we had at our library. So, be, having openness to collections was something that was already important to me before I began with this position. Okay, so in 2017, 2018, as I said, our primary focus was our own microfilm collection. And at the time, that was simply our local newspaper, the Mineral Daily News Tribune. Now, um, I've given this presentation to a lot of different groups and or variants of this presentation. It's always changing because things are just moving very quickly. Um, and this is probably the most shifted from the original presentation I gave back September 26th to the Rotary Club of Kaiser. So I often will make a lot of Mineral County references and for that I'm sorry. I just haven't had a good chance yet to familiarize myself with the other three counties that we've added in yet. Um, so our first goal was to do the Mineral County Paper of Record. That was the Mineral Daily News Tribune. Um, we actually reached out and partnered with the paper to get permission. Um, those of you guys who deal with historic stuff know that there is such a thing as public domain. Um, right now, the current year, if content is young, or sorry, is older than 1925 for newspapers, it's pretty much safe to distribute and share with people. Um, so our focus was again on the mineral paper. We also had access to the college newspaper. I mean, really our intent when we started this was that was all we were going to do. Um, of course, our budget was allowed to kick over some of the money that we had allocated. Uh, we had gotten donations we didn't expect. So we were actually able to add on three more local newspapers. Uh, the Frankfurt Beacon, which was a small regional circular that ran uh, towards the end of the last decade, which is weird to say about like you know 2009 to 2011. Um, Elk Garden News, which we only had historical issues of uh, in the 1800s, and also the Piedmont Herald, which for us is probably at the time was the most th the thing we were most excited about adding because the Piedmont Herald is an older newspaper than the Mineral Daily paper. Um, so, and this, and basically, we also kind of thought that was going to be our stopping point. We kind of got lucky again on budget cycles. And I was kind of like, yeesh, we need to make use of this as smart as possible. It turned out when I was doing a little bit of digging that if we had chosen to digitize the public domain newspapers in our nearby counties of Hampshire, Grant, and Hardy, or sorry, Hampshire, Grant, and Hardy County Public Libraries, that it would pretty much perfectly fit what we had in our budget. Total coincidence, total fluke. So we partnered up with all of our local public libraries. Um, again, so please say thank you to Megan when you see her. Uh, we couldn't have done this if she hadn't shared content with us. Um, and actually, in the past um, month, we were actually we're adding, we were able to get permission to add on additional paper the West Virginia Advocate out of Cape and Bridge. Um, so we're really excited about how this project is moving forward. Um, I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> um, 
How do you relate to chronicling America, the Library of Congress? That's a great question. Um, we aren't part of that, but Regional History Center is in Morgantown. Um, they typically look at larger projects, they want, and they're typically looking for things that they deem of national historical interest. Um, so if you look at the past projects that the University of Virginia and Regional History Center partnered on uh, to, for that platform, they looked at a lot of Civil War newspapers. Uh, their most recent grant that the Regional History Center got was to um, digitize newspapers from Harper's Ferry and from the 1920s, or, uh, sorry, Reconstruction era papers from Harper's Ferry and 1910s through 1920s newspapers from Logan and Mingo County to address the mine wars. So they tend to look at things that are sort of really big level historical interest. Uh, our focus on this, we've started looking locally. I, I researched the South Branch Intelligence Center mm -hmm. on chronicling America. That is on there. The part of why they pulled it on there is because they, it's content that they viewed as a way to tap into Virginia and the border state history. So some of that content is on there. Now our coverage of the South Branch Intelligencer goes a little further than theirs. And we, the reels that we have aren't quite the same as what they had used. Um, but they're still sort of incomplete compared to every issue. Unfortunately, yes. Well, I, I wish that we could say uh, that you know when we look at these old issues on microfilm that we could get everything. But it really depends on when the comp when the newspaper or when the library or when the archive that collected these and what they had at the time. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, from a library perspective, microfilming is still a relatively young technology versus you know books, scrolls, older content, things like that. So it, there, this is a conversation that I often comes up in a lot of local groups of gee, can't you just go find more older historical papers for your area? Like, well, unless they're in someone's attic and they've been in like a perfectly sealed box, by and large, they're in pretty bad condition now. Uh, we got actually really lucky with the Piedmont Herald. Um, the historic, the Mineral County Genealogical Society had gone down to the, the Herald Printing House and had gotten older issues. So those are probably the oldest papers uh, that I know have that still came, were microfilmed and came out really well. Typically, those kind of projects, the older papers don't microfilm well. What years were the Piedmont? Those, the, those particular ones were late 18, I want to say, I don't quote me on this, but I want to say very like 1888 to uh, 1901. But I see so many dates and so many things with newspapers that it just skips my brain. But that was the, the rough era that it was in. So that helped fill in. Does that answer the question? Or? It does. Plus, Dan showed me your paper. Oh, oh well, the paper gives um, total coverage. It doesn't deal with, like, obviously, for each reel what we went through. So, um, okay. Uh, so we've been really lucky to find ourselves with this project. has really been growing and taking off. Um, in the early days, we were actually surprised how quickly uh, the online local history and genealogy world kind of grabbed onto it. Uh, even before we had our public release at Homecoming, 20, uh, Homecoming 2018, uh, I had discovered that we'd already been linked on Ancestor Hunt uh, and several other genealogy blogs and sites. And like, so they just must have like found it like as they were going through. Uh, apparently, they really stick on the vendor company and look for updates from there. Um, and actually, in the fall of this year, we actually got something that was really good for us. Um, the West Virginia Library Commission has actually added our site as one of their West Virginia resources. So that's been really nice for pumping the visibility of the site. Okay. And you guys can interrupt me at any time, feel free. Uh, now, I know this graph looks scary, but uh, this is to kind of communicate how fast this site has been growing. So back in um, September, I want to say 26th or 29th, I was at the Rotary Club of Kaiser and I pulled these stats and we had only had about 5,000 sessions at that time. Um, I pulled these last week right before I went to the Eastern Library Network at Hampshire County Public Library and we were up to 72, uh, roughly a little bit more than 7,200, almost 7,300 sessions. That's uh, every time a user gets on the site and spends 
more than at least two minutes on it that they didn't just land on and bounce off. Um, this is what actually I pulled off of today. So we had actually gone up almost 400 sessions. So for a little local history site, uh, something like this, that's actually phenomenal. So we're getting a lot of usage. And I see that the more content we add, the more frequently people are getting on it and using it. Um, a lot of our traffic comes directly where people have seen access to it either through our web, through the library's website or when I've gone out and talked to people. Um, the, the other chunk of our stuff is from social media and a lot of that is we really try to get out and promote, especially with the Mineral County uh, Facebook groups, linking to the site, linking to articles of interest to try to encourage people to be more aware of the resource and take advantage of it. I haven't really done that for the other counties yet and a lot of that's because all of this stuff has really gotten added in like literally the span of the last month. Um, and actually in the past week, uh, we've been in conversations with libraries in Taylor, Tucker, Pendleton, Kanai, and Cabell County about how we could partner with them and get their content online as well. Um, and I was, something that actually surprised me is this lower uh, piece here, organic search, refer, I know that this kind of technical stuff refers to somebody used Google, somebody used Bing, um, search for you know newspapers or some other thing and just happen to pull this up. Um, that's a very low amount of our traffic. So a lot of it is that that's why it's so important for me to get out and actually talk to people for people to be aware of it. Um, now, what what do you ascribe the direct to then? Uh, primarily, me getting out and talking to people. Um, it it's I've been to this is. Probably the ninth or tenth presentation I've made since the end of September. To look, and a lot of that's been out in Merrill County. So it's it's really helped pick a lot of that up. Um, direct means that they are putting the address in directly and going from there. So um, there's a really big need for getting historical newspapers of West Virginia online. As it stands right now, there is only twenty. There are only twenty two counties that have historical newspaper content. And I just define historical newspaper as old, old enough to be in the public domain. So that's going to about 1924 right now. Um, out of that, there's about 100 titles of newspapers represented. Uh, that number's a little inflated because it includes title variation. So for example, if you look at the Mineral Daily News Tribune, um, that's gone by multiple titles, including the Mineral Daily News, the Kaiser Tribune, uh, various, like, riffs of that. Um, and the same thing is true of a lot of other papers uh, have changed up titles over the years. Um, right now, so we're standing at a big gap, which is, you know, 33 out of 55 counties need to have some kind of content made available. And the hard thing is not all of these counties uh, likely have newspaper representation that has been preserved, for, that is old enough to be part of public domain. Or if they did, it's finding it really on the microfilm or finding it in some format that we can work with. And we're now starting to really explore um, dealing with where it's been preserved, say they've sent it out and they've gotten it scanned a DVD or other content like that, that typically we've only focused on digitizing from microfilm with the vendor that we work with. Um, actually, last week, I got a very nice present from my boss who went down and visited the state archives in Charleston for uh, legis uh, legislative day. This is the union catalog that was put together back in the 1980s. Um, and what it is, is it actually has all of the newspapers that have been on a microfilm copy for the state. And I'm just now still trying to get through that and talk to the different libraries and see who wants to get on board with this. Um, so I never thought I'd actually see a physical copy of that. I know State Archives has, has and of course, the Regional History Center has it. Um, okay. And again, like I said, feel free to interrupt me anytime you have questions. Um, so you guys are looking at this and saying, well, that's nice, but how does that really relate to me? And that's what we're starting, starting to get towards. Now, you guys are the Landmark Commission. Um, one of the things that we've actually already seen in Mineral County is Mineral County's uh, tourism group has actually looked at our site for building out information, you know, getting in for gathering older pictures. Uh, they often reach out to us to say, can you go back to the microfilm and produce a better copy because our site's content is primarily focused on getting the best results for text. 
So that's actually increased our microfilm usage to some extent, which is kind of the double-edged sword of this, because as I said, our staff size is small, so that can be kind of problematic. Um, one thing that I, I actually recently had just seen when I was in the Hampshire County Public Library, this self-guided uh, tour of historic Romney, I thought that was really cool. And one thing that I don't know how many of you guys have ever heard of Clio, but it's a site thing that you guys might already be making use of, but one, if you're not, it would be a good thing to get on. And one way you could actually make use of the content we provide, and we would encourage this, is that with the content you put onto Clio, actually linking to the articles on our site. That way people can get a richer understanding from the sub. So we would really like, you know, we are totally in favor of however people want to use this content. The only thing we would say is please do respect the newspapers who have given us permission to put this up and, you know, don't create like a bunch of books that publish stuff that's not in the public domain. You know, so be respectful of stuff that's 1925 to present. Um, of course, it's a huge benefit for local genealogists and community historians to have these newspapers accessible and searchable anywhere you want to be. Um, and something I hadn't actually thought about, but last week, um, from an fr uh, engineering firm out in Morgantown, we actually had two historians in, uh, and they had told us, yeah, for the past month, we've been digging around on your site because we're doing some stuff for the North-South Corridor, and I had never thought of this as a tool for people who are doing historical and cultural resource evaluation or, or mitigation. So they're like, yeah, we, we couldn't have done this actually without their so uh, site to start with. And I was like, oh, never expected that. Um, again, I mentioned I had a STEM background. Um, when we had put this together, I actually was able to, literally less than an hour, had we put together a list of everyone who had ever taught geology at Potomac State. Um, just because a lot of those notices went out to the paper or they were in the school newspaper. That was something I didn't predict. Um, it's not uncommon for someone to come up and say, hey, I was on your site and I found a lot of stuff about my family, um, my parents' businesses. Uh, there is a, the local gym that's right on the corner of the campus actually used to be the hospital for Kaiser. And so they were, the person who owns that now is a history buff. There's a, so it's a mix of an apartment building slash gym. And so he's been psyched to get onto the portal and actually pull old stories about the hospital when it was there. And so he's working on making a display with that. So there's a lot of great advantages to this that, you know, it's just I couldn't have predicted that they would come out this way. So um, to access it, you just go to our library's webpage, which I, I have linked. <coughs> sorry, I have a link to on um, the handout that you guys have. Um, I know it can be frustrating sometimes to find things on the website, so I wanted to make sure that there were as many links to it as possible. Um, in our top ribbon up here, we have a link right there, West Virginia Newspapers. Uh, right down here, if you scroll down a little bit and you didn't see up there, we have a link right there. We have a link in our sidebar there. So we basically wanted to make sure that people could get to it as many places as possible. Um, working actually with uh, technical services people in Morgantown, We've actually made sure our cataloging records link out to the site, and I've actually seen a few, few times where this has happened. It's not many, it's about less than 10, but people often land on our site and they just type in the name of the newspaper they're looking for. And thanks to their efforts to link the catalog records with the site, those people didn't go away unhappy, or didn't go, they didn't go away unhappy. They were able to get access to what they wanted. So it is actually linked out there too. Um, when you click on that link, it lands you on this uh, research guide portal that we have right here. Uh, I'm in the process of getting some videos up on it to show how to use the site, and I'm trying to get more newspaper-related uh, resources here. I actually have links to other West Virginia, or, or sorry, other digital West Virginia newspaper collections on here too. Um, and I need to update. The, this is just a little clip of the site. Um, I need to actually update the title list because, again, things are changing much qu more quickly than I expected. Um, okay. And when you land here, you'll land on a page that looks like this. Uh, if you guys go on the site and in the next two weeks this is gone, don't freak out. We're in the process. So this actually used to, our site used to be pscLibrary.advantage-preservation.com, but because this project has now like so quickly grown beyond just Mineral County, that's when we became West Virginia Newspapers. Um, and so the branding is actually going to change to reflect that. So if it looks different, don't worry. You 
didn't land in the wrong in the wrong you didn't end up in the wrong place. You're right where you want to be. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? So if you go into that site and instead of putting in just the newspaper that you're talking about, can you put in certain dates? Can you? Yes. Um, when you land on this port, when you actually click through here, and I'll, I can get on and show this as well, um, it'll actually pop you to here. You click right there, takes you to here, and you add, this is this is the actual page, and it lets you um, search by keywords, uh, filter down by date, browse by certain titles. Um, there's actually when you click uh, the advanced search here, it actually gives you the ability to select by city. Now that's by city of publication for the newspaper not by the city of the event. Um, unfortunately, unlike a lot of the bigger newspapers who have their older content online, like the New York Times, uh, our pages are just indexed by date. So when you search for something, you're going to land on something that is like, say, Piedmont Herald for March 31st, you know, 2001, page two. Um, and then when you click, when you land, and I can actually, I'll, I'll demo this as well, um, you're, so then you just look on the page then for the article that you wanted. So it's searching by keywords on that. Is this simply image or is this OCR? It's both. So it has been OCR. Um, that's why the image quality is not always phenomenal. It's been optimized for the readability of the text. So this is one of the things that when I talk to the public libraries, sometimes public libraries actually generate revenue through going back and researching and pulling off the microfilm. I said this is probably going to just cut down on the amount of time that you spend looking and digging around. Uh, what this actually does is you now know because your patrons come to you at specific dates. And a lot of times people are only charging for copy, so it's not likely to cut into your revenue from that. Because you're still going to provide the copy of the image, etc. You're just saving yourself a lot of time. So and people have been very receptive to that, and it seems to be bearing out to be true in instances where I've dealt with it. Um, a lot of times you don't know exactly what date you're looking for. Mm -hmm. With microfilm, you can just get into the newspaper and go page after page yeah. after page. Mm -hmm. Can you do that here? Yeah, actually, if you click on to, um, and, I, and I will demo this once we kind of break out of the question and answer, and I'm happy to search for anything people are interested in while we're here. Um, you can actually click on it, and there are little tabs on either side. There's also a drop down menu. And, um, you know, instead of me talking abstractly about this, let me. Uh, just pull this up, right? <coughs> so, how do you follow though the story that goes on multiple pages and multiple dates and multiple because just like like the people who drowned in the river, right? And then yeah. two weeks later they found one the buggy and the horse, search. and then another week later they found the the people. And mm -hmm. you know, how do you? Where's the search? So you can still click ahead, just like in the microfilm experience you're talking about. Um, so for instance, if I were to look for, um, so you can see I typed in Hoffman Hospital. I, I didn't filter anything in advance. Um, this is actually one of my favorite articles. Kind of miss when papers used to be a lot more of the report in the community news. Um, so this is from back in 1926. Uh, I mentioned the Hoffman Hospital being near the Potomac State College campus. Um, so that's why I'm always kind of familiar with this. So this is actually what the page looks like when you bring a search up. So you can see here, it highlights the keywords that you were searching to make it easier for you to find on the page. And across here, this is your home button. It'll take you back, if you click that, be forewarned, it is going to take you all the way back to that first page I showed you. Uh, this here, I, who here hates icons? <laughs> They're just incredibly abstract, right? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the ability to have, we have no control over how that displays. I wish we had customization of it. There are a lot of things I would like to tweak, but we don't get that. Um, this actually will take you back to your search results. This lets you opt off of having things highlighted, which is nice if you need to make a screen grab. Um, this is the cropping tool, and I will show you how to use that. So you can actually crop and download. These PDFs are actually really big in the full size. 
and this download button right here is to download the entire PDF piece right here. Now it's only that page, it's not the whole issue. Uh, you can make it larger or smaller, and I mean, again I mentioned that drop down for advancing. Um, that's one way you can do it, but these little arrows right here, you can go forward and back. So we do have some users who actually, I've seen them come into the public, into our, sorry, not the public, the, into our college library, and they will get on, and they will click through like they were on a microfilm machine. Um, and that's fine, it's just that way you want to do it. And a feature that's been added in the past two months is you actually get some brightness contrast controls, which they didn't have before, and you can actually increase the size of the text a bit. You can change the contrast on the page, so if it's, sometimes you can actually get a better image out that way without having to go back to the microfilm. It's not 100% perfect. Okay. You can zoom out and get a bigger chunk mm -hmm. of the page. Yeah. A lot of accessibility there. Yeah, that was something that's really... Yeah, that's the, the OCR, is that, like if someone blind got on there, can they navigate into the OCR? Um, probably not easily. Unfortunately, I hate to you say have, it. You haven't field tested that at all? I have not field tested, but I had one of our faculty members was, am I still being recorded? Yeah. Oh. Well, we, we had a prior faculty member who was uh, vision impaired. He wasn't fully blind. And honestly, that was for me my first real exposure with uh, working with someone in that kind of environment. So I'm seeing the way that software works this site is probably not accessible to someone who needs a screen reader, has a lot of low vision issues, things like that. Uh, you can magnify it and increase it. Yeah, you can magnify, you can bring it up and make it pretty big. But if you're someone who's really dependent on a screen reader, this site's not gonna be very good. And there's not much we can do about that. It's really dependent on um, getting the vendor and putting some pressure on the vendor to change that. But if you downloaded the image, mm -hmm. What does that come across as a JPEG, a PDF? PDF. <coughs> Couldn't you go into their PDF? And yeah, but it, again, it's going to come down to how accurate is the OCR, especially when you have, say, for instance. Okay. Depending on the image. Yeah, so for example, Lincoln and Gettysburg right there. And we do a lot of uh, in house scanning as well. So uh, that would be a little bit. So I've blown up to about 300%. OCR will have a really hard time with things like that uh, when something is hyphenated across and understanding this is a chunk of text right here. So, you know, it's a lot of times the screen readers that I've worked with, at least assisting that particular individual, they want to read text straight across that. Um, and then, of course, as you can see here, the, the only right there is almost completely unreadable. <coughs> and if you was a screen reader, that might as well just be a big black block. Yep. So, gotcha. does anyone have any other questions? Is anyone wanting to pull up something? You can... Charlie, what do you want me to pull up? Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Um, just do a search for the word blind, because I'm anxious to see if this relates at all to the schools for the deaf and the blind up here. Well, I guarantee you there's got to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of content in that. Yeah. Um, but the important thing to remember, for Hampshire County coverage, right now, this stops at 1924. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I was looking at uh, 1884 to 1921 or whatever, 1924. Just to see if there was... Um, so something I really want to warn you guys, you have to be really careful uh, because of, as I mentioned, the OCR thing, especially with your older papers. Um, be careful when... The, so one of these drop-down options, you get... Uh, anyone who's used library databases or dealt with these kind of things, we get in all of the words, exact phrase, any of the words, none of the words. So be really careful with your exact phrase searches. Um, as I have on the handout, for example, if you're looking for someone whose name is Daniel, you know, if you're not finding what you're looking for, you know, cut it, chop it up, um, you know, look for Dan, look for, you know, try and mix and match what you're, what you're coming across. And um, 
don't put deaf and blind because then you'll get every sense. That yeah, that's why. Yeah, the problem is and will immediately get cut off, and that's uh, that's what I wanted to kind of show with this. Um, I'm going to change it to exact phrase, and it should actually put deaf and blind as the phrase. Oh. Now, are you searching only the mineral daily news? This is searching uh, everything on the site. There was no filter on it. Um, so when you say everything on the site, is that just the mineral paper, or is that all the paper? That's every paper that's included. Uh, all right, so you can see here, there were like... Sorry, when we were back there a second ago, we had over 4,000 results with the phrase wow, with the, all the words deaf and blind. Yeah. When we changed it to be the exact phrase deaf and blind, Cut it way down. Uh, the interesting thing is, and this is the first time I've seen it do that, it actually took out and anyway and just found deaf blind as a phrase. If you put quotation marks around it, would it keep going? It typically ignores quotation marks. Does this marks. scroll? Does this scroll? Yes. Would you yeah. scroll for us? Mm -hmm. And so for you guys, let's uh, let's see only what's in Hampshire review. Yeah. Really? And let's take it off of, let's make it do all of the words instead, not just force ourselves to that. All right. So here are we from December 2nd, 1896. All right. So uh, this actually is kind of behind, just give it a second to load over top. Uh, so this is a kind of a common issue you run into with really older papers. The, typically what this means, this, they always, they actually go in and have quality assurance. This would have been the best scan they could have produced from the microfilm. So sometimes you will have things that just get lost. Uh, there have been times when I've been very frustrated looking in the Mineral County stuff, but still by and large, Having access to it this way and being able to search this, can yeah, I would. Can you scroll this page so we can find the definition? Yeah, oh I'm yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just exactly what did it find? Yeah. All right. Move on. Hang on. I'm going to take it down a little bit so we can see across the whole page. There we go. So because we did all the words, it found deaf and blind in separate chunks. Alright. Mm -hmm. Blind that isn't highlighted. For example, right here, it found blind, but it didn't see deaf. And so if we actually pulled this document down and like looked at it on a PDF reader and like copied and pasted the text off it, it probably means this word right here, probably it just didn't get interpreted correctly in some way. It's been misspelled by the OCR. So you can see deaf is missing there, deaf is missing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you have to play with it, you kind of have to tweak it. And again, you can pull up, and you can actually pull up by date and search through date if you want to do it that way too. And to be honest, searching this way, is still a whole lot of heck of easier than searching on a microfilm machine. Oh, yeah. Sally, <laughs> There's a, oh, sorry. I always forget this thing's right here, so I lean down. Um, we're really lucky. We have a, a ScanPro 3000, and this is where I'll be a little bit nerdy about uh, microfilm readers. I actually really enjoy using it. Um, there, I mean, let's be honest. Anyone who uses a microfilm re uh, reader, there's something reassuring about that. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of wish they'd add, add like a background noise feature. So when I click on here, it goes, Shh, I want that like clicking and humming noise, you know. But if you ever want a real uh, old world experience, the the Piedmont Public Library has a unit from like the 1950s where it's uh, this sort of upward projection, and it actually shoots the uh, resolve image down low. And when it blows up, it only blows up about like that big. So it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I actually never seen a unit like that. Frostburg State has a ton of different microfilm readers. So um, anyway. Does he so, so if I have hard copies of the South Branch Intelligencer, mm -hmm. how, how do I get that online? Um, typically, well, oh, sorry. Or, or are you even say. interested in that? We would be interested if, there, if the content doesn't overlap or it's in better condition. Um, the only thing where I'm a little queasy about the idea of picking up someone else's newspaper is the fact that it has to be 
ship to Iowa. <laughs> so a lot of times when people hear that, they're like not so keen to do that. However, I will say uh, we have one of the things that we encountered when we did the mineral paper is they hadn't had the resources to microfilm their paper from I believe 2010 to present. Uh, so when we shipped those out, I mean we were shipping like I think we sent something like 24, 30 boxes of newspaper. And we're talking like big open boxes where it had to lay flat. Um, and everything pretty much came back in great condition. I don't think there was a single thing that we could complain or say was damaged. I would say for shipping something like that, um, if the person was interested, I would definitely want to do some research and digging and talking to people who deal with archival conditions to find out what do you need to do to ship that in great, and, and, and that probably involves putting it in some kind of rigid case and then loading some pretty big foam blocks around it and putting a lot of insurance on it. <laughs> Definitely shipping, shipping like UPS or FedEx, not trusting the Postal Service. So, so you're not interested in the uh, basement scanner image? Like if he brought it to me and I scanned it and sent it to you, it probably wouldn't be the quality you need. So that's a question we haven't really explored yet. Um, actually, the quality is not going to be a, that big of a problem. Um, we finally found, we finally got a, uh, information from the vendor we work with out here of what kind of cost would we incur if we have scanned images and want to upload them. Um, and it actually sounds like it's really reasonable for price for us. Uh, but it's just something we haven't explored up to this point because it would always be such a gamble with people's like very precious resources. You know, we want to make sure that we're not doing something that's going to endanger something. But still, my opinion would be you'd be better off to scan it and store it somewhere mm -hmm. as to just have a piece of paper or sure. sure. deteriorate. Right, Charlie? Right? right. Um, I agree. I agree. You know it's, saying. yeah. Because the paper is going to deteriorate. Yes. Uh, we, do you have only one one uh, vendor? Right now, we've only dealt with one vendor for this. Uh, the company we work with, first off, because our project was so small, and even if we accomplish what we want to do and go to projects, like get the project scope to the entire state, it's still going to be too small for the big dogs who cut some heavier deals to be interested in us. That was something we learned the hard way. Um, I'm always, whenever I hear about a new microphone company that I hadn't heard about, I always reach out and try to find where their price points are. The company we work with right now has the best price points. Um, but really only in the past week, because we actually had a library approach us that has a lot of their content, they'd actually already gotten converted to DVD. You know, what can we do with the DVDs? So this was a question that I didn't even know what the answer would be until this past week. Um, What's the DVD? Uh, DVD. Oh, DVD. Yeah, they, instead of getting microfilm reels, they had gotten it converted to DVDs. So, um, so we're, I'm always keeping my eye out for cheaper ways to do it. And certainly if somebody has scanned images, I mean, it's a conversation I would want to enter into. Uh, the, the ideal way would be being able to get, you know, the nice thing about getting it on microfilm is in a durable content Sorry, in a durable, uh, durable format that if something were to happen to all the electronic copies, at least it's backed up there. But, you know, we, the nice thing is our, the digital content that we have up here is backed up out in Iowa. Uh, and we actually have hard drive backups here. And then we've also uploaded onto our network drives. And we're working right now with the main campus library in WVU to try to figure out some ways to, what can we do to maybe get off this site and put it, on a, you know, having it in a second place would be really nice. And I, so. Do you really believe that microfilm is going to be the medium of the future? <laughs> if you keep microfilm in like really good condition, let's be honest, microfilm can outlast DVDs. DVDs have a pretty short shelf life. Um, but DVDs are not the only way to store digital well, right. information. It's not, but I mean, you, you always run into issues with electronic storage. You have to be careful. You have to be duplicating storage. You have to be doing data quality checks. It's really handy when you know that it is on that microfilm storage as well. I, I would like to see stuff preserved in as many different formats as possible. I'd like to see, you know, to know something's on microfilm that's been backed up on, you know, cloud storage that's backed on hard storage out here. Um, I'd like to see things backed up as many places as possible. Actually, we got ourselves into a situation where the local paper pulled. Um, they actually went back in their back vault, discovered they had extra microfilm copies, uh, and we actually gave those over to the Hampshire County Public Library for the mineral paper. 
just because we wanted to make sure that, okay, here's a whole extra set of them. Let's not have two copies in the Potomac State College Library. Yeah. Let's have it somewhere else. It's the same reason why we didn't send it to State Archives or didn't send it to Regional History Center in Morgantown. We wanted it spread to a fourth place. So. Um, this is a, a question, maybe other people will know this, but um, the Hampshire Review here and the South Branch Intelligence are on the banner. Mm -hmm. Even today it says Hampshire Review in big letters and then it has South Branch Intelligence here underneath of it. Mm -hmm. But the Hampshire Review is here in 84, 1884, but then the South Branch <coughs> Intelligence here goes to 1896. 12 years later. So was it two separate papers? Yes. That's a it question. Was? Yeah. Okay, so I thought some of them had that. A similar thing happened with the uh, Moorfield Examiner and the Hardy County News. Um, I don't know the story with that, so I'm glad to learn this. But So uh, that often happens where um, I actually had thought the Kaiser Tribune had just changed over to the, uh, the Mineral Daily News. Uh, and the reality is there were just two separate papers running at the same time. So I, I don't know the complete history and backstory of that. Uh, when I get more time, I'd like to dig into it. Yeah, so. cool. Uh, Can you type in Ridgedale Farm? I just want to see. What sure. Does that have an E in the middle of it? R I D G E. Yes. Okay. <coughs> I want to make sure. Now this is only going to be looking at a Hampshire review. Near yeah, Ridgedale Station. <laughs> <laughs> Stock. What is yeah, this now? Oilers booked R.M. Rose for Robert M. Rose. There it is. Yeah. Nice. Eggs hatched. Mr. Ball just my dad called me. Look at that breed of pigs. Is this? Pure bred Duroc. 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 And young horses. Eggs are hatched there. <coughs> Bats. Batched. What's the date? Batched. 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 Yeah, what, what is it's it? It's probably... Yeah, what's the date on the batch? I don't know what batch is. 1918. Oh, they sort them, right? They sort them. A batch of eggs. You said a batch of eggs. They, they, they just hear the store is advertised here next to it, right? So... It's 19... That might be hatched. It's hatched. That's the search for the range. I want to search. I know it's all the way I'm going for. December 8th, 1915. All right. So, you want to get it in the area? Yeah. Date searching can be a little tricky. Um, we actually have a specific re uh, request for a specific date. So I want to make sure you guys see while I'm here how to set up the dates. Okay. Great. Um, it's... I got really ticked off with it the first time I encountered it. Because it's just kind of like... What's going on here? What's wrong? Um, so the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure you pick your decade. Uh, you said it was 1915. 1915. All right, so you pick. So if we wanted 1915, you first go in, make sure you pick 1910 for your decade, go to your year, then go to your month. December. Okay. Eight. All right. And if you want to keep it just in there, then you need to go over here. Make sure it is not still. Make sure all these are still set. Click your date again. Uh, typically, you need to fudge it over a little bit. It won't let you search just right on that. Um, and make sure before you hit apply, really look to make sure the date actually changed there. Um, I've had times where I thought I clicked after I, like really clicked it in, and I hadn't actually clicked it. You want to get rid of Ridgedale? Yeah, I'm going to change it. Um, now, so we're going to do a search for Opera House. That was a request. Oops. All the words. The phrase. Well, my concern is that it somehow trunk, like, you know, moved down in the position of the page. Okay. So, we've got one result. Okay, we're going to have more. But, um, can you get the page and zoom out? Yeah. Well, important, those result numbers are just the number of pages that came out. They aren't the number of results, like the number of times on page. That's where the old green palm Russian does. That's where the old green palm Russian does. 
is what you're looking for? Yeah. What is it? That's the very first answer. Well, 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 see the all right on the right? OC all right. So this is exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Just basically reflects it in both places. <laughs> if, if, it had, if it had been like the first, <laughs> <laughs> Close this is why I get a little bit sketchy about being recorded. Sometimes I just say things are very frank. So, wow. um, thank you. This is yeah. this is really cool. It is. For yeah. sales too. That's just as so, simple as if the, the link that's app. right up there across the I'm top. Um, can actually be like the actual. Yeah. So if you ever want to like, if you find something on social media, or sorry, let me rephrase that. So. Right. How many people here you actually like use Facebook to stay connected with friends, family, other people who do genealogy? So, um, or local history. So you can actually copy if you want to share this with somebody else. What we often what I've saw is as soon as this got up there, as soon as there was Hampshire County content, somebody actually like went through was actually like snipping a lot of content and like putting it up. What would be kind of nice for us just to encourage awareness of this site? Mm -hmm. Is if you see something you want to share with someone, sure, snip it, but you know, copy and paste this link right here that was up here, and you can actually just paste that into Facebook. Going from the HTTP. Yeah, that's that's one way to do it. Um, there. Paste Control C. Yes. Now I, I meant to show you guys the cropping tool. Forgot that. Um, right here, there is actually like a crop tool, and you can use that to clip out images that you want to use and share. So if you click that, it automatically it's open this curse hair, right? Cursor, or sorry, cross hair right there. I it's been a long day. Um, and you just can drag it across. Now the cool thing is that's that's have uh, shut that highlighting off ahead of time. But the nice thing here, so the snipping tool is really cool. I use the snipping tool all the time for work. Um, the thing that stinks, unfortunately, about the snipping tool is if you need to scroll up or down in a page, you know, you're kind of limited to what's in that field of view on your window. Um, with this, you can actually go, like, you can drag something the entire page length if your story runs that far. And the next step is just you click this forward arrow right here. So I know some people mentioned, like, I don't know if the red dot helps to point that out. Okay. Click that. Uh, give it a second to load because it is pulling that image at the full size. So you're not necessarily always seeing it at the full size on the uh, when you're on the page. And a little tip for people who get on here and you see things you like, if before you hit next, if you put a little bit of information here, it actually does sort of add to the keywords. It stores that and attaches that information to the page. Now that's not publicly visible for everyone. But what it does help is then if you're searching and stuff, it should make, what I've been told by the vendor is that it actually gets folded into the keywords that are on the page. So it actually makes it so that content can be a little bit more searchable that way. Um, so if you, you could like add the, you could like <laughs> add the name of that actress in that movie to that mm -hmm. text box, and then when you searched again, it would add that to it? Should. Okay. That's what I've been told. I've, I've tested a little bit, but I've never been able to tell if it's always consistently popping up. So you could do if you actually stop right here and hit download, it'll actually download the image right there. If you hit next, um, and then hit next again, it actually gives you like um, this URL. If you hit share with Facebook right there, it'll actually share a direct. It'll share this content, share a link out to that stuff. And, that, and that's nice for us because... It to your timeline. And yeah. It actually, what's good for us is that it, it encourages people to be able to go back to this resource. Yes. It makes them aware of it. 
Um, but you know, however you want to do it, I mean, I'm not going to tell people what to do with their time. So, yeah, if people want to, yeah. yeah. But uh, that, that's a kind of a nice way to do it because it does let you know, lets people see this is where it came from. And they can go back and find more stuff, and so. Does that actually go on your Facebook page or just on Facebook? So if you click share with Facebook, sorry, I didn't mean to flash with the pointer there. I don't know why I pointed that. If you click share with Facebook right there, uh, if you're logged into Facebook, it will go to your Facebook time. <coughs> Did that look <coughs> on a group? It does go on my mouth. At that point? Yeah. I'm not sure. Like you can choose a group to put it all. Like I can see sort of all of it. History, Hampshire. Let's find out. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You yeah. can see you're not going to be asleep tonight. But she may have to be. A <laughs> it's Friday night. And it's going to snow. Let's get up. <laughs> then you would. Yeah, you're not going to be able to. <coughs> I would put it there because you're not a member of that group. No, but I can see if we put kind of options for that. Okay. So what we're seeing? So that's options. your page we're looking at then, right? Yep. That's on your page. And since of the following. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. so, all right, there's the answer to your question. If you click up there at the top, you have the option of. Yep. Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay, there you go. So if you wanted to be able to share it directly to it, you could. Okay, great. Yeah. Is there a Theaters of Romney homepage? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> That's there, right. there might be next time, right? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, but this cool. time next month. Are there any other questions I can answer for this, or? Well, that was really good. Gosh, this guy is good. Fond of knowledge. Now is the time. <laughs> um, I have my contact information on the handout that you guys have on the second page. You know, if you guys need help with this, give us a call. Uh, choose an email. Um, if you're in Kaiser, stop by the library. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, you know, there's only about three of us, so and we're open about 70 hours a week. Uh, I'm typically the person who deals with this the most to answer the questions. So I'm not always there, but feel free to give me a call and come in that day. And you know, and I'm pretty good too about scheduling appointments. I've had people from Kaiser who have wanted to come in and. Well, where is you know, the system. library at Kaiser? Um, so we're I'm at the Potomac State College Library. So if you go up the Potomac State campus and drive on the main loop, um, we're actually like right on the loop. So. And we we have a little bit of local history stuff. Um, our I've been over to the Hampshire County Public Library. Um, you guys have a much, of course, have much better material for Hampshire County than we do. So, no, I mean, no surprise there. We have a lot of Mineral County stuff. Well, you know, but, Mineral County was part of Hampshire County at one point. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Including the So, because you're a college yeah. campus, is the <laughs> library open 24? We're only open 70 hours a week. So, it's seven days a week, 10 hours a day? Um, we're open during the regular semester. We're open Sundays from <coughs> one to nine. Uh, we're open Sundays from one to nine. We're open Monday through Thursday, eight a.m. to nine p.m. And on Fridays from eight thirty, or sorry, from eight a.m. to four thirty. Really, our best days for people who want to come in are uh, Sundays and Fridays. That's when things get a little bit more low key. What about so, <laughs> we're not open Saturdays, unfortunately. Um, we've tried Saturdays a couple times and. The students just don't click to it. I mean, I think they might be doing some other things on Saturdays. We're not sure what. No. Yeah. But this is open. This is all 24/7, right? Yeah. That's one of the great things is this is required to physically go there for anything. Not to discount your importance mm -hmm. as an individual, but is there any is there any need to go there to the to the library itself? I mean, this no. seems to be. It, it, all encompassing. Yeah, it, typically what I'm offering that for is sometimes I, I notice people have trouble starting. Um, oh, okay. And I've I had that little meeting. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I don't mind people want to come in. Um, I think I've probably, since I've started like really going out and promoting and talking about this uh, since late September, I think I've only really had about 10 people come in. Which, you know, that tells me, hey, I'm hoping that they, since there are so many users on the site, yeah. that they found it easy enough to use. But again, like I said, if you're having trouble, you're having trouble finding something, and you're not sure if it's you, or you're not sure it's the site, email us, call us. You know, you can stop in and see us. We can try a couple different things. So. You can call me. So, is there anything on the site that we actually want to see the real thing? Because you had said. 
uh, you mm -hmm. film it so that the text pops out, but somebody contacted you and said, hey, can I get a better picture of that? Mm -hmm. Is that going to you? Um, if you ask us, what we can do is we can go back and we can look at uh, which library the reels came from, and then you have to go back there. Um, so if it's Hampshire, of course, it's the Hampshire County Public Library. Um, you know, if it's, you know, say the Grant County Press, Grant County Public Library has that content. Um, what we have on our site is the Mineral County papers. Mineral <laughs> This is great, thank you. Our hope is to just keep adding on to it as much as possible. Do you at the college have a facility that is committed to control so that if they have, if we're aware of old newspapers or old historic articles that are in need of preservation? Um, We're getting ready to move our archives actually off the uh, third floor, which is not humidity controlled, to our basement, which <coughs> from the room that it actually ha is, it'll be controlled for that. If you're really concerned, however, about uh, the material, I would really urge to reach out to Regional History Center in Morgantown or to um, Frostburg. They have better facilities than we do. Um, but how willing are they to accept things from outside? That's a good question. Okay. I, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I, I would reach out to them and at least offer. But we are happy, however, in um, to help with digitizing and help with digitizing large format items. Um, we're getting a, a book scanner in uh, February, so we're hoping that will add to our capacity a bit in house. So. So regional what? Regional History Center in Morgantown. Um, the only part of the WVU. Yeah, they're actually in the same building as downtown campus library. They're in the uh, the old library. So, <laughs> my only thing is I'd say before you take the effort of sending something to say Regional History Center, I would make sure if you do want to send it to them for preservation and keeping, I'd make sure you have a digital copy for yourself. Um, so their backlog is just so long on getting content. Um, we actually had sent them, because we recognized our facilities at the time weren't good enough to keep something archivally, um, we actually sent the Potomac State School uh, correspondence out there. And now that we have this book scanner coming back, I actually ended up driving back out there and getting like all the correspondence back to borrow through uh, June. So that's one of the things we're going to be working on digitizing from February to June. So and doing that in-house using the scanners. Last chance. This is wonderful. Thank you so much.